Welcome to the Subconscious Mind Mastery Podcast. Thomas Miller, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to do something that I did on our Facebook group and YouTube group now on Sunday nights. If you're not part of this, I would highly recommend you joining us. If you were part of this on June the 5th, then you've already heard this. But we are doing this thing at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and I know that's convenient for some and not for others. We just have landed on this since August of last year, and we do this thing called Healing Convergence, and it really, truly is healing, and the energy of this group get-together on uh, Facebook Live in our Subconscious Mind Mastery Podcast listeners group, and it's also on the Fun Astrology YouTube channel, simulcast, so you can join in and you can comment from either of those sources. So if you haven't joined us in our Facebook group, we'd love to have you. And if you prefer YouTube, then that's available as well. So what we did in the most recent episode was this spiritual health checkup. And this totally parlays the previous podcast where we talked about just this rise up of conscious living. And this is wild. So uh, after I released that episode, I was thumbing through some online videos and somebody said exactly what I was feeling in the previous episode and that we're parlaying into this, that now is a real time to be focusing on your spiritual conscious journey. Time to game up, if you will. So from that, I went on a hike up here in the mountains near where I am and came up with this. I thought the analogy of a health checkup, you know, when you go to the doctor and you get kind of a head-to-toe scrubbing over every year or so, well, good thing to do more frequently than that, spiritually. (laughs) I would do this on a, uh, well, you know, I do it on a pretty frequent, almost daily basis, but you got to zoom out, and the only way to do that is to have a little bit of time in between. So let's just think in spiritual terms as though we were getting a physical, but we're going to do it spiritually. So the first little question in our questionnaire is, what have you done well lately? Think back, and this is something, obviously, that you're going to kind of jot these down and then spend some time with them, right? Hopefully. You and your journal. Thinking of what have you done well lately? What worked? I came up for with an example from my own life. For me, with all that is going on in the world, which used to bring all kinds of fear and dread and turmoil and angst because of my background and my upbringing, now as I'm addressing these things and analyzing them, and I'm not doing the head in the sand, the ostrich approach, I'm very aware of what's going on but also feeling very content and at ease, at least at this point. I think it comes from what we talked about in the prior episode, that this is really, to me, about that some people are being called up to do this spiritual work. So I just have to trust. I mean, this thing is so much bigger. Everything that's going on now is so much bigger than any of us. But I have a trust. I have a trust in the process. And I'm very content with my life. And after spending a lot of time talking about Lives of the Soul, the audio book from Fred Dodson, that I am not afraid to die in the least. So however all of this works out, I mean, I'm complete where I am. So that's just a personal thing. But that was one of the things that I feel like I've really done well lately. Also working on this uh, second book that I'm um, hopefully going to finish here very, very soon and will be out, The Science of Getting Rich, but the Subconscious Mind Mastery version. And I am super excited about this. I'm just loading this thing up, and it is, uh, wow, it is, uh, it's turned into something I'm really proud of. All right, so then let's flip the question. What areas could you be working on? So where is something that could use some improvement? an area that you maybe thought that you had made more progress or just one of those areas that you can't just seem to get up over the hurdle? What if in six months down the road you go, I can take that one off my checklist, like boom, it is done. What would be one of those things? Maybe there's more than one. Here's one of mine. I just recently was given 
a beautiful place in western North Carolina. And I am still every day learning how magical and wonderful this area is. And yet, wired into my DNA is this thing of always needing to look around the corner, needing to look uh, for something better. I've done it in jobs. I've done it in relationships. I've done it in everything. Here the universe, over the decades, has put me in these incredible positions, and I've always been looking for something else. Well, this became really clear on the hike the other day, and I spent some time actually apologizing, repenting, if you will, to higher source, to God, saying, I so appreciate where I am, and this is me being frail and human, and thank you for putting me here. Thank you for thinking enough of my life to give me this incredible gift during this time in my life and to be present and be content and be grateful right where I am. And I took it further. I made a commitment that I would really be sensitive to that because that's one of those that six months down the road, I would like to see significant progress in my own life. All right, next question on our consciousness physical, spiritual physical. And this comes from a lot of the topic that you're going to hear about in the book and audio book that I'm working on, The Science of Getting Rich. Do you have a vision that you are holding in your mind and in your thoughts? And this isn't some kind of a got to have, have to have, not that kind of vision at all. This is one of those that is woven into the fabric of who you are. It's in your DNA. It's in your very being. It's there with you when you go to bed. It's there with you when you wake up. You can feel it even when you're not thinking about it. It is there. Yes, you can throw a switch and turn it on or turn it off, but it is just always part of your consciousness because you have woven it in. You can see its fulfillment. You can feel yourself as doing or being or enjoying that very thing that you're creating. It just hasn't happened yet, but you can feel into it. Those things will manifest. They'll manifest in the right time. But do you have such a vision? Think of what it is. Jot it down. Yeah, you shouldn't have to. <laughs> it should just be in your mind right now. Ah, yes, obviously. Boom. I have one, and I kind of have that policy that I don't talk about things unfulfilled. But yes, I have something, and I can absolutely feel it down to my toes. And developments are moving toward it, and even some recent developments have really upped the game of that vision. So it's getting bigger even by uh, even through its fulfillment. So I'm still holding it. It's still fulfilling. We're in the gestation period, and things are lining up exactly as they should be. That's really a cool process. All right, next health checkup question here. If you have a vision, do you have a vision board? good friend of mine, Gene Vant Hull, has created a vision board workshop, if you'd like to check it out. It's on the website lifedreamery.com, and there's a tab at the top for vision board workshop. You should check it out. It's a great resource on if you would like to really take your vision board to a next level, this is a great course to show you how to do that. There's no right or wrong way to do a vision board. It's coming from your heart. The best way to do one is one that resonates with your soul. But Gene is an artist, and if you want to know how to really create some magic on your vision board, that just stimulates your subconscious mind even more. So it's a great way to do it. Highly recommend you check it out. Next, health checkup question. And this goes back again to the new book coming out. Are you holding that vision as though it has become a fabric within you? We alluded to this a minute ago, but typically what we do is we get a vision and then challenges come up or we get a new vision, the new shiny dot, the new thing that looks bigger and brighter, whatever, and we drop that original vision. Holding a thought all the way to completion is a difficult thing to do. So the question here, the health checkup question is, if you have a vision, even if you've done a vision board, has it 
really woven into your DNA, or is it just an idea? If it's just an idea, you probably need to think about how important it really is. Now, here's a question every doctor would ask. Are you exercising regularly? Not talking about jogging or bicycling or going to the gym. I'm talking about what are you doing spiritually to exercise, consciously to exercise. My buddy Hemet, who so was looking forward to having here in North Carolina, and it just didn't happen, Hemet has been doing kundalini yoga for probably about an hour on average every morning for the last 32 years. I've been thinking about that. I'm off and on. I'm not as good. I'm not as consistent as he is. But think about the benefit to his body and think about the flexibility that he's going to have as he approaches his 70s and into his 80s, that he will be a very limber, nimble. There won't be any walkers and wheelchairs and all of that. His body is going to be in amazing shape. Why? Because he keeps it limber. And the benefit of Kundalini is he gets the physical benefit and the spiritual benefit. He exercises very regularly. But, you know, a good part of this exercise might be to write down what your best, most productive, spiritual, conscious exercises are. What is it for you that really moves the needle? Is it meditating? Is it journaling? Is it listening to a good podcast? Getting out in nature for some physical movement? A bicycle ride? A hike? A good jog? While you don't have headphones blaring somebody else's stuff, you're able to connect with your own higher self during those times. Whatever it is, think about it. And is it something that you do regularly? Maybe not every day, but many times a week at least. And then another question that the doctor is going to ask, <laughs> how's your consumption of healthy food versus junk food? Or in this case, we might call empty spiritual calories. Like, whatever we're doing, it's just not benefiting anything. It's junk food. It doesn't contribute to your caloric benefit. Are you filling your mind with healthy spiritual food? Are you spending your time doing healthy spiritual exercises or healthy spiritual activities? Or... If you looked at your eating plan over the week, just like if you did, if you looked at what you put in your mouth, are you putting a lot of things in there that are shell calories or even things that are detrimental? You know, people like to chill out in front of the TV. It's the, the downtime of the mind. Well, after you do that for a few hours, where are you spiritually after that time? Did it lift you up? I hope that what you're watching did. Maybe it didn't. Same thing people get online. I know I do it. I do it. You just want some mental downtime. You thumb through one of the various, you know, 25 social media channels that you can find these days. And what are you left with at the end of that time? Did you learn something? Did it uplift you? Were they spiritual posts? Were they political? Were they news? Was it good news or was it disturbing news? Take a look at your diet, not only what's going down your mouth, but what's going in your ears and through your eyes. And here's the last question on our spiritual consciousness health checkup. Do you trust your doctor? <laughs> and this is doctor with a capital D, the big guy, the big doctor, not your physical doctor, not your health doctor. I'm talking about God. I'm talking about higher source. I'm talking about the universe. I'm talking about your higher self, however you want to frame and visualize that. But when your doctor gives you, quote unquote, orders, really it comes more in the form of suggestion. Do you listen or do you argue? I think that human doctors are to be questioned. Absolutely. Especially now more than ever. But I think our spiritual doctor, the one with the real true capital D, we follow every time without question, because that is what is leading us to exactly where we are supposed to be spiritually, consciously. And then the question might come up too, are you in communication with your doctor, capital D? 
not through a telemedicine visit. I'm talking about truly connected, like you have a dialogue going back and forth. If not, that might be a really good starting place. Let all the rest flow out of that relationship. Start there first. That would be the best place to organize. These are some really provocative little questions. I hope you'll add them to your repertoire, and I hope that you'll do them on a regular basis. Check in, because right now, seriously, this is a time to be on the A game. Hopefully, these little questions will help you do that. Thank you so much for listening. I wish you a beautifully envisioned life. And along the way, enjoy the journey. I'm Thomas Miller. See you next time.